Hey, good morning. Well, it is spring, which means a lot of you, especially me anyway, maybe a little further north you're not, but a lot of you are gonna be started getting ready to get set up for your, your summer grazing or your grazing time uh, throughout the, the year and the season. And I thought this was a perfect time to kind of discuss something that a lot of people don't think of when they're setting up their pastures to graze. And this is specifically if you're setting up to do some type of regenerative grazing or intensive grazing or mob grazing or rotational grazing or all those kinds of things. When I think about how I want to set my pastures up, of course you have to look at your resource and what animals you're using. And I'm specifically talking about multi-species right now because you guys know if you've watched our channel, we run goats and then we run cows. And we can do any of the others also. Uh, we've had chickens before out in our cow pastures with a uh, big chicken tractor and then we've also, we can also do sheep. Uh, so we, we can do all those things and we run pigs. We don't control them though. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> anyway, so it, this is if you've got a multi-species type of operation that you're wanting to do. And I just wanted to talk about the things, some of the things that, that you need to think about. One of the most important things, like I said, you got to make sure that your water and that type of stuff is set up. But before you do that, you really need to think about your pastures and how you're going to graze. Specifically, and this is an error that I made, this is a mistake that I made and I would be, I would almost be willing to bet almost everybody has, has either made this mistake if they were working on their own place or They've got people working for them. When you think about doing regenerative grazing, you're moving your animals. You're coming in, you're grazing it, you're do, either doing an intensive graze or a severe graze, and then you're coming out and you're, you're giving it enough time to recover to whatever you wanna to try to do with it before you graze again. That may be a year, it may be 20 days, it may be 14 days, it just depends. So there's a lot of things with respect to the rest, but what I want you to think about is what do you think your, your maximum herd size that you may end up being able to, to stock on your place is? And then relate that to how often you're gonna move based on your pasture size. Now that's gonna change a little bit as you move along because your pastures, pastures will start getting better and more productive, or they should, and so that'll change a little bit, but it'll get you ballpark. What you don't want to do, in my opinion, because I'm, I'm by myself and, you know, World's Greatest is here helping me, but it, it's, I've told y'all before, our biggest resource de depletion or our biggest resource uh, need that we have is labor, and that's me. And I realized early on when I was doing what they were calling mob grazing, uh, you know, I was moving them a bunch, and and I had some interns that would I would that would help me in the summertime and give me a little bit of a break. But you're moving them sometimes every hour and sometimes less, and I knew right away that that wasn't sustainable for me. I didn't want to have to be moving them every hour. I didn't want to have to be moving them every day. Could I do that? Yes. Did I want to do that sometimes? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because I saw the benefits. And if you're a young person and you're getting, getting, you want to get into agriculture and you want to be the most productive you can be, that's how you need to set it up. The more you move them, as long as you understand all the variables that are going into it and you can observe and adjust and react, the, the more productive you'll be. So there's a tip for anybody wanting to get into agriculture. But I knew I did not want to move them, be forced to move every day because, you know, you, you got to have some time off sometime. You got to be able to go with the family and do things. You got to be able to go to church and do things. You got to be able to, you know, spend some time with friends and do things. You got to take some time off. And so I knew after I did that for a while, uh, it was not going to be sustainable for me. So now I've gotten to the point where I know I don't want to make my pastures 
too small with the herds that I have because I know about where that that sweet spot is and for me it's it's about a hundred acres it depends on the resource with the cattle and and the goats and by that I mean if we're in more of a brush pasture then the cows are going to be in there less time as far as you know and, and still be able to eat what they need if it's in a more brush pasture and I've got the goats in there they'll probably be able to be in there a, a normal time what I may schedule but for us it's a it's about a hundred acres and so I try, as I'm building my pastures, I try to focus on that. Try to get it about 100 acres. It should be a little too big now because I don't have my numbers where I want them to be. But I think as my numbers build, and I'm specifically talking about my goats, that will change where it's going to be, you know, an average of maybe a three days in a pasture, which is fine. That gives me a good hard weekend sometimes, just depending on how it falls and, and it works. So that's my first thing that I think about when I'm setting that up. When I do set that up, some of you guys have seen some of our fencing videos, and this is what we call our, our permanent set it and forget it fence right here. This is the uh, oh, 13, 48, 12, 660 foot. Uh, stay tough, fixed knot, high tensile. This is the fence that I put up for a perimeter area that I call uh you know a phase one i kind of break ours up into different big pastures where i know a hundred percent i've got control inside of a fairly big pasture then within that big pasture i'll use different fence and i'm going to show you that today because that's what i'm going to be building because it is something that is and here's a, a brief example it is something that is a lot easier to build it is much cheaper to build and the bottom line is it works so let's take a look at that so the first time we split our pastures inside of our what i call our phase one which is where i was showing you the high tensile uh, uh, net wire uh, the 13 48 12. Uh, the first split we did was with a three wire electric which was like this Simple deal. We put a post every 60 feet. A T-post every 60 feet. Now something you'll see a little bit different here is I went ahead and welded up these heavy duty braces. This was early in our multi-species journey. And I was just like everybody else. I was concerned that you wouldn't be able to keep the goats in and so everybody told me that you know this would be enough the three wire uh, electric would be enough actually they were saying more wires than that but I realized real quick three wire was going to be enough but I already had the braces in and I had done I had done that in order to go back with the high tensile net fence if I had to to keep the goats in well, it's not necessary, so that's wonderful. That's one, uh, one hurdle down. And the reason I did my braces like this was for the high tensile and my posts on, those, on that high tensile wire is every 20 feet. So I could put you know, more posts in there and make it work if I had to go back and put the high tensile. So anyway, here was my original splits. These were quite a bit bigger pastures. These are going to be a couple hundred acres uh, of pasture here. So they were quite a bit bigger. So I, I learned a lot from that with respect to, you know, managing the parasites and managing the, uh, the predators and managing the dogs and, and all that kind of stuff. Ooh, don't want to get shot. Ooh. So all that comes into play. But right now I'm just wanting to talk to you about uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm trying to help you not build your pastures too small. Unless you want to. Unless you want to be moving your animals every day. Now, I should kind of back up and say that th our movement is not only to utilize our resource the best we can, but it also is to manage our parasite load. And that's for cattle and for goats. 
So if, if you don't do yours like that, then, then you may not need to think about any of this stuff that I'm talking about. But if you're thinking about utilizing your feed and your pasture the best and getting the most uh, bang for your buck as far as impacting every plant in the pasture and having that plant you know, draw its roots up to replenish the leaves and then put its roots back down and get that pulsing action going throughout the entire pasture, then you need a higher stock density. And so that's why we typically fence a smaller pasture. But like I was saying earlier, you wanna think hard about that. Okay, here's our first water lot. And this is our first watering point. This is how we're building our more simple splits. This is a single two and seven eighths inch pipe. It's a nine foot pipe. It's 56 inches out. So the rest is in the ground. We drove it in with a driver. And so what that does for us is we can come down here and I say we, uh, of course Shane helped me a little bit with this, but we can come down here and drive this pipe and start stringing wire to the pipe, next pipe down there, which there is our three wire. And how we got to this point as far as what size we needed and, and where we wanted to split it was by doing polywire first. And polywire is a great tool. A lot of you guys use polywire and I've used more rolls than probably most of y'all have ever seen. But as you know, we probably, you may not know or not, but we have a lot of deer and it, deer are very hard on polywire. Uh, so I needed to kind of figure out a way to get out of that and also it's labor intensive but if you can do the labor and if you have time to do all the labor I would encourage you at the very minimum to start figuring out what your perfect pasture size is by using polywire which is what we've done here at this water point we would always split it this way all the way down to the white pipe down there in the distance uh, if you can see it and then we would split this way to our net, you, high tensile net, this way to our high tensile net, and this way to our high tensile net. So we had four pastures here. So now we've decided that we need to split it into two for most of the time. Now, what does that mean, most of the time? Well, it means exactly what it says. On average, I'm going to just be leaving, you know, this is going to be a a hundred acre pasture to my left this is going to be a hundred acre pasture to my right so i will have a you know three day graze on average so i will not have to be moving them every day here's something else that you think about the way i split this i split it exactly like i was splitting it with the poly wire at least north south so what that does is that allows me if i do want to come in here and i want to get a little more animal impact in this brush i need the goats to, to browse this brush a little harder I'm, i've got some invasive things that are out of control that i want them to hit i can come in here and i can go ahead and tie off to here with my poly and run my old line up and and tie to the, the net fence over there same same thing over here so it allows me, it allows me to graze smaller easily because I've got my, my water set up right here. I've got one fence going this way and one fence going this way all the way north and south. So really what I can do is if my cattle are in here and I want to really high, high intensity mob graze this stuff, I can come down through here and I can run a fence straight across single wire for cattle straight across graze this and i can also you know back like this and go that way but i can graze this build another one you know 100 foot apart that way graze that one build another one 100 foot apart that way build that one bring my lane this way back to the water and if y'all have never seen that scenario uh you know it's ian mitchell annis is kind of who showed us that and so it works very well and it's an easy way to do it so what I'm saying is it gives you options where you can always go smaller easily. You're set up to do it. You thought about how you would do it when you were putting in your, your two-wire electric for your multi-species. And so it's, it's simple to get into that and do it if you need to treat an area 
Uh, so just think about all of that. But the biggest thing is don't immediately go in there and start fencing your pastures, you know, really small because you think you need them small to get done what you need to get done. Really think about the labor it's going to take. Because, you know, you can always throw a gate and just leave the gates open, but then why spend the money and the time building the, the semi-permanent uh, pasture for your animals? Just go ahead and think about it ahead of time. Use poly wire in place of it, and you can kind of fill that out a little bit. But really, really, really think about the size. Uh, and then you have to play in your water and all that stuff. So I'm fixing to start stretching a piece of this two wire out. I'll video some of it so you can kind of see how I do it. It's, it's kind of self-explanatory, uh, but it does go up pretty quick. Okay, I'm working on a new dolly here, a new Jenny. We're gonna see how it works. Just get this roll semi-empty so I can put the big roll on, then I'll go ahead and be able to strap it down on my rig and pull it the right way. So let's see how it goes right now. I'm not wanting to have to unload this until I empty this because this is very heavy. <laughs> You start figuring out ways around that as you get older. That's the problem. This is the problem with this. You know, if it does this to you at all and you go to and you go to pulling that out of a loop and trying to get it straight, it's jacked up. And I don't know that that uh, we didn't have that issue yesterday. Maybe it's just under it. There we go. Look at that. I tell you what, that is a crock. I'm telling you if some if somebody could come up with one of these rigs it was a set it and forget it rig.
it'd be worth something that's for sure because i got this thing right here is worthless i mean so far it's worthless it might take me a little while to figure it out of what works best but i mean right now it doesn't work with a flip This thing is designed for the pull side to be over towards the front. Just hold that for now. Oh, my word. There we go. All right. Okay, that worked better. All we gotta do is tie our insulators off here and then we'll keep right on trucking that way. Bam, bam. The spooler's working much better. Somehow it got one wire under the other and got it where it was twisted. That usually happens when you do, you have to do that. It doesn't come like that, so it might have accidentally got like that yesterday. But uh, it's working well today. I was, I've been able to, or now I've been able to get it strapped down. It's working pretty well. So we're putting out our last our last wire, and then what we'll have to do is put up all the gates and we've already got most of them done and then we'll have to post it so you know this this is probably a 
it's probably a, a mile of double wire fence and you can get it up in a day if you went ahead and drove your post you have your if you had your big t uh, pipe done and then just started putting your wire out you could get it up in a day pretty easy get all your gates and stuff done everything that has to do with wire you could get done in one day and that's about a mile's worth of fence and then the next day you can post it with your t-post that's pretty good now i'll tell you one thing that i do when i'm running one of these since i've only got a single post in the ground I know that I don't want to get this fiddle string tight like I do with those big braces. I get this semi-tight. Matter of fact, I really don't want the top wire very tight at all. I want it to sag in between the T-posts a little bit. And that's because when the cattle come around, there's a good chance that I'll need to raise that up a little bit. Which that'll be easy to do. I'll just pull on it, slide it up, and we're good to go. Well, okay, here we are the next day, and the posts are up, and we are done. So one question that usually comes up is, what's the spacing on the wires? And the best advice I can give you is, be the goat. In the infamous words of Dirty Harry, do you feel lucky? Well, do you? <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time and have fun with it.